And uh, Dana Priya's book is very relevant to our current theme, which is the four reminders. And the four reminders come from the uh, Tibetan tradition, probably. Uh, and last month, uh, I gave a, an introductory talk looking at the first one, which is this precious opportunity, which is really valuing this opportunity that we have to be fully present, to be aware, to be mindful, uh, and to grow as human beings as well, uh, and to um, make a difference, not just to ourselves, but to the rest of the world as well. So we have this opportunity. Um, and the other reminders include impermanence and death, uh, just the sense that although we have an opportunity, uh, don't be too complacent because how long is it going to last? Things can go wrong, things get more difficult. Uh, but also on the positive side, the fact is that everything is always fresh. And this is a lovely theme in Dana Priya's book, actually, that sort of mindfulness of the freshness uh, of the continuity of experience. Uh, and then we have this uh, reminder that actions have consequences, uh, sometimes called karma and rebirth. Uh, but it's the sense that what you do does make a difference. Um, uh, we're not just subject to blind chance or to the whims of a deity. Uh, it's up to us to, to make our lives, to create our lives, and also to create the world, the whole world, not just ourselves. And then finally, the defects of Sangsara is the usual name for the last one, um, which is that things are not good. They're not right. Things do need to improve. We do. We're subject to negative mental states and the world needs to improve as well and, and we just need to not be again complacent about it and think uh, oh let's just sit in bliss uh, but re remind ourselves that, uh, that there's a lot of suffering around a lot of difficulty and but it can be changed. So those are the four reminders and I'm going to hand over to Dan Priya now. I'm not going to say much about him personally. He lives in the seaside town of Deal uh, with the ocean being his constant companion and inspiration, I think it would be fair to say. Um, and he set up the Buddhist community in, in Deal. Uh, I remember him telling me that uh, he just thought he'd see if there was much interest. So he hired a room in, I think, in a hotel, was it? And, um, a real hotel. Yeah. And uh, put an advert out. And was it 80 people turned up? Uh, uh, 78. 78. Oh dear, I'm exaggerating. Only well, actually, we had to turn a lot of people away because we only had 40 seats, but we got 78 people in there. Yeah. So what it shows is that even in a small town, that there is a lot of interest in meditation and Buddhism. And it's fantastic. I'm really pleased that Dana Priya managed to encourage that and to create and that what is now a thriving Sangha, a thriving Buddhist community in Deal. Uh, but this is his first book, um, and he's going to talk about uh, actions have consequences. So over to you, Dana Priya. Well, thank you, Ratna Prabha. Thanks for inviting me. And uh, well, lovely to be here with you all. Um, I love this sort of forum where we can waft in from anywhere around the planet. And here we all are together. Um, just want to say thanks very much, Bernadette. That was a lovely meditation, really beautiful and skillfully led. And uh, I just want to say I love Marie's background on the uh, screen that's brutal um so yes this is well actually this talk sort of coincided with my book coming out so it's my first book launch it's all very exciting um so this talk is weaved with the book because actually it's just totally relevant for actions having consequences um so uh, yeah it worked really well so i was really pleased when the Prabha asked me to come and join you all for a little bit so first of all, I'm going to read the uh, third reminder, um, uh, karma. So I'm just going to read that. So sitting comfortably, here we go. So everywhere I look in the universe, I see things arising and passing away in dependence upon conditions, from galaxies and stars to microorganisms. This pattern holds true. Things aren't random. They have causes and effects. This is also true of my life. What I am today is the product of many influences, my family, culture, education, and relationships. It's also a product of choices I've made, of how I've acted, of my mental states and habits. There are many things I cannot alter, 
and these I must accept. But I can change those conditions that spring from my mind. I can change how I think. I can affect how I feel. Meditation and Dharma practice give me ways to do so. I know that skillful actions have brought me happiness and fulfilment and have benefited others. When I have been kind or generous, I've seen others benefit and it has given me happiness. I know that my unskillful actions have harmed others and harm me too. When I've been unkind, I have seen the pain I have caused. Those actions have reinforced negative states of mind that make me unhappy, and I felt remorse and regret. Therefore, I should cultivate positive states, practice skillful actions, and avoid unskillful ones. This means practicing the Dharma, which offers a sure path to establishing positive conditions. To this path, I commit myself. So quite powerful. Um, so yes, actions have consequences. I think we've all got old enough that we learned that one by now, but have we really learned it? Um, so it has consequences for the world, uh, for others, and also we need to remember that our actions have consequences on us, on me. My actions affect my world. And actually, when we really look, our actions come from our views, sort of our intentions, and sort of our overall sort of ethical perspective on life. Um, yeah, all of which sort of, all of what we've learned really on the journey so far as a human. Um, you know, our education. And it's all been education, actually, because education starts as soon as we are born, as soon as we arrive in the world. Our birth, you know, has its an effect on us. Um, and of course, in the early years, we learn from our caregivers, um, sort of how our caregivers were with us. And it sort of goes in by osmosis, really. Um, yeah, particularly at an emotional level. Yeah, it's, um, and of course, we have siblings. Um, oh, I don't know if your siblings, if you've got them or anything like mine, then very different from me. <laughs> it's amazing how we look like each other, but my brother and my sister are very different from me. Um, and that's great, accepting difference, the wonderful, but we learn, you know, we learn from things. Um, yes, yeah, sort of uh, what we, we picked up on the way, really. You know, about siblings, well, for instance, my brother was spiteful to me throughout my childhood, actually. Um, well, till about eight years ago, actually. But anyway, uh, we won't go into that one. Um, and of course, this gave me a view. Quite early on, I should fear boys and men. Um, therefore, future actions in relation to men and boys were affected by this learning. So we sort of, you know, I come with all these variety of emotional drives, you know, sort of the views that we've taken on from others. Um, and we start to form a life from that. And of course, you know, with however we're doing, we are creating. I am creating all my choices. I am creating all my actions. And all sort of have consequences on ourselves and others and the world. It's just how it is. Um, so, you know, I've gone at life, we go at life with these views, um, all from others, from our social education, our school education, our role models, um, teachers, grandparents, friends, and the surrounding culture, which is quite a powerful one. And if you're anything like me, um, I sort of went at life making choices, uh, therefore creating actions, which had, had consequences, but based on views that were not mine, were never mine. Um, it wasn't until I was 30, so I'm over 60 now, so it's sort of like halfway through my life. Um, I had a health situation, quite an extreme health situation. 
And when I woke up, the health situation was a blessing in the end. It stopped me in my tracks. So I woke up to the thoughts that I'd never asked myself questions like, who am I? What do I think? What are my intentions? You know, what consequences am I having on the world, on others, on me? You know, um, yeah, and actually my book is part of trying to convey all the things I've learned through life from that waking up moment, actually. And then all that I've learned the last 31 years. Um, and uh, I basically realized that I taken on blindly other people's emotional worldviews and gone at life without checking in deeply in here with my own inner nature, you know, my own voice, my own spirit, you know, whatever got zapped in there at birth is unique, isn't it? And the same for you. It's, um, and, and what is it, what's it here for? What am I here for? You know, but what am I here for, you know? Um, and of course, it all takes a bit of unpicking, doesn't it? <laughs> what's, what's my views and uh, what was my mum's and, you know, and all that and uh, teachers and things and culture. Um, yeah, so, yeah, there's this unique spirit sort of in here, sort of zapped in here to this physical collection of elements <laughs> I call my body. Um, so what work of art do I want to create? We're all a work of art. You know, we're all creating. I mean, at this moment, I'm creating and you're creating an effect on the world. Um, and, and it's us, I'm choosing and you're choosing. We have, we're totally responsible. I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Yeah, I became unwell, actually, by following others' perceptions of how things are, how I should be or how I thought others, well, I didn't even think this, but I can see now, how I thought others thought I should be <laughs> to sort of be all right, I suppose, or survive. Um, and as we know, most humans are driven by the three poisons of greed, hatred and ignorance. Um, uh, but slowly, you know, over time, I've learned that uh, it's generosity, love and wisdom which create and shape a beautiful life existence. Um, took me a while, <laughs> um, but like us all, um, we're all a bit of a messy emotion and we're trying to make the most of it. Uh, so I imagine your life, you know, will have some resonances with what I'm talking about of taking actions and suffering the consequences uh, and seeing little insights uh, that that action did not bring you happiness or contentment. Often it brought the opposite. Um, yeah, even though we may have had little insights and seen through, oh yes, I do that so that happens, um, but we forget. And um, you know, this may you may have memories of this sort of thing when young, getting drunk, you know, and the next morning feeling dreadful. And of course, say never again, never again. We had a little insight. Oh yeah, I do that, and that equals that. Um, yeah, so taking the action of drink makes us feel deathly. Actually, um, actually, I stopped when I was twenty. I learned that one quite early on. Um, and um, but guess what? We forget. Humans easily forget, or we're swayed by others or by peers. Uh, we haven't yet sort of built up our own core of self-worth. What is good for me? What's my way of self-loving me? Um, you know, because we can still be sort of a whole different, different sort of collection of different sort of views, intentions, volitions, actions. It's sort of like having lots of different characters, isn't it, on duty? You know, one day you're on a diet or not having chocolate or whatever it is. And uh, that's what I'm doing, you know, and I'm going to do this. And then, you know, the next day you can be, oh, I'll just have a little bit of chocolate, <laughs> whatever it is, you know. Um, it sort of just depends who's on duty, really. Um, you know, you might have 
one day you're just a bit tired, you know, and you just can't quite have the will to uh, go for the run like you promised yourself would or get yourself out of bed to go to the gym, <laughs> you know, the, whatever it is, you know, it'll be unique in every moment, um, what it is. Um, yes, yeah, so, and, and, you know, so through all those different characters, which we really, through meditation, through the Dharma, we're getting to know, and we're, it's what's integration, isn't it? It's integra we're integrating all that, what I've talked about so far, all those forces, all those lovely people who, you know, were caring for us and want the best for us. But of course, it's the best from their point of view. It's not my view. Or I didn't know I could have a view <laughs> until so, you know, halfway through my life. Um, uh, yes, so it's about self-worth at the end of the day. I think the biggest poison in the world for a human is the lack of self-esteem, self self-worth, self-love. I think that's the biggest poison. Most of us don't know how wonderful we are. Um, that's why I think the rejoicing merits in our movement is such a good practice. Um, yeah, because, you know, when we use work, we can either make a stink with our words or we can leave a beautiful perfume in our wake. And how do you want people to remember you? And remember, it is you that is in fact doing the choosing. Um, nobody else. Um, yes, yeah, so at some point, um, you to be listening to me right now, you to be here at this wonderful class in North London Buddhist Centre, um, you have to have been stopped by creating your own suffering and that suffering has begged you to stop, look, feel how you are creating your life. Got to go in here. I've got to listen to me. Who am I? So the answers lie here. It's within us. It's not out there. <laughs> it's here. You see how that's written? And then it says, live how to see differently and live an extraordinary, ordinary life. So um, yeah, it's just not out there. So this thing about be sure it's you that is doing the creating and, and there is no one else to blame. The great thing about Buddhism, um, and, and it was a key reason I'm a Buddhist, is that the Buddha says that you have to take full responsibility for your life. Blaming is futile. It just creates more suffering. You know, stuff happens, but it's how I respond to it. And, and I have full responsibility for that. Um, it's interesting how our mind trips us up constantly. Um, actually, this morning, I was set off for a run. It was a beautiful morning. And I just went past the, my neighbour's house. It's attached to mine. And uh, I've noticed recently he's got a new girlfriend for a few months now, which is lovely. Um, but he's not been here very much. And, uh, and it's so lovely having him there or not having him there. It's so quiet. It's wonderful. Um, and I sort of thought, oh God, I bet he moves in with her. I'm gonna, it's gonna be rented out and I'm gonna have noisy neighbors. And then I got into this sort of spiral of, oh God, it's gonna be noisy, whatever. And of course I'm creating tension for myself. So that action of that thought, and then an emotion and a worry and a concern and a fear. Just, so, and then quite, I, I hadn't half, got halfway down the road and I thought, oh no, oh no, <laughs> yeah, you can't, that's not all right. Don't do that, don't ruin your run in nature this morning do you see what I mean so um, and we're all doing that all the time even me after 30 years of practice you know <laughs> but uh, still at least I, I caught myself you know that's a blessing in a sense isn't it so yeah who is creating your life who is acting who is speaking who is choosing your thoughts you know there's only one answer isn't there um so one of the chapters in my book, chapter two, it's called, It's Never Not Now. You know, it's never not now, is it? It's really interesting when you think about this. Everything that we know is alive right now, or everyone that we know, and it's just here. We all live on quite a knife edge. There's nothing five minutes ago, 10 years ago. There's nothing in 10 years time, two minutes time. It's just not there, is it? And 
most people miss most of their life because they're not here now. They're not enjoying savoring, you know, saving my very bush and soya, my mouth's dry. Mm. It's, um, it's sad really, because what happens is we're either in thoughts of the future, you know, fear about your neighbor's gonna move out and get a noisy one, <laughs> or, um, you know, sort of regretting things I did yesterday or whatever, you know, and, and that's it. Or, or we're looking forward to the weekend or we're, you know, or, or a holiday or whatever it is. Um, and there's all this sort of looking forward to future. And then when we get there, well, we're not there anyway, because we're looking forward to something else. So we miss it all. Do you see what I mean? Um, and the only place we can make, choose our actions, um, responsibly and fully how you know we are is now is to sort of be here with full awareness what is the best i can do you know and, and sort of get we have to go inside a little it only takes a few seconds it's like one breath it's just stopping isn't it that's the gap on the wheel of life which lots of you know about let's just oh okay and of course if we don't enjoy our nows our whole life will be a bit miserable, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> it's only now, you know, our life is only ever made up of hopefully millions of nows. Um, so yeah, uh, yeah, it, it, in every now, it, it, it's me choosing. Um, yeah, so we, we can choose to create this beautiful being or an ugly being. It, it, it's in your hands, it's in my hands. Um, you are the creator of your life. Um, and the other thing is, you are stuffed full of love. You know, where else, where else can it be, you know? It's not up there on the shelf or, you know, it's like, it's just whether I choose to let it live, whether I choose to be loving. I could be lovely with you, I could be a miserable, so can't I now? You know, it's, it's a choice. Uh, and it's don't, we haven't got to get it from outside. It's just, we're here, it's here. And, and, and it's the same with all qualities. You know, we're, we're confident, we have courage, you know, we are generous. It's whether we allow it to exist in the world from our energy and our force and our decisions, our choices, our views. You know, it's not complicated, is it? Uh, uh, and we can create a beautiful, beautiful world through just making certain choices. Um, yeah. Interesting. So let, chapter 16 is called Let Your Love Live. It goes into all that much more, what I just said. And chapter three says, we live such rich lives. Now we do, we live amazingly rich lives, particularly, you know, even with all the COVID thing going on, which is sad, but it's like we're still living rich lives. I mean, the supermarkets still predominantly fill up with things, even toilet rolls, you know, so it just keeps filling up, doesn't it? And, um, you know, it's millions of people that are doing that to enable us to have such choice. You know, my porridge this morning, you know, the oats, well, just some of them have grown somewhere and harvested and do whatever they do to them to, you know, um, make them all right for a packet and the packet was made and designed and they were probably made in Italy or wherever, uh, grown in Italy and, you know, sort of like um, it was transporting, just all the people involved were getting my porridge to the tape, you know, this morning, the, the supermarket and somebody made the credit card, you know, that I could use and, uh, and just, I don't know how many people. And that was just the oats. I mean, I, what did I have? Blueberries, linseeds, I had soya milk, I had a pear, you know, uh, and there was the plate, the bowl, the cook at the table, millions. And we can only live these, these rich lives, all have all these choices, which of course I make. I'm making my choices and my actions. Um, because all these lovely people out there doing it, who most we don't know. But thank you very much. Thank you very much. We don't notice this most of the time these riches, these, these abundance, like if I need a hospital, you know, it's going 365 days a year, 24 hours, it's there, you know, or if I need a train or a bus, somebody's driving it, most of the time I don't even notice because I don't want a bus or a train, you know, but so I'm 
just it's just seeing how interconnected we are. Um, and of course, we are one of these cogs in this wheel. We are doing things that are helping, helping this planet. Um, I think thinking this way, I mean, obviously it's about gratitude, this bit, um, uh, helps me feel less fearful because when I go around and doing all my judgments as we do <laughs> about people, immediately you see somebody you could have gone slightly like, like this, or whatever, you know, I can just think, well, they're doing something that's, that's helping people, you know. Um, so anyway, I think that's a really in, an area that we can really create a beautiful life and, and, and help our actions and, and what consequences they have. Um, right, where am I now? I'm getting lost now. Uh, yeah, so yeah. Ah, oh, now I want to state the obvious. I don't hear this very much um, said, but not acting has consequences. Non-actions has consequences. I think that's really important. Um, uh, another chapter in my book is called I Can't Change, chapter six. Well, is that true? <laughs> you know, we know actually, if we have been doing this for very long, <clears throat> my voice is going, um, we know we can change. Um, you know, we are change, aren't we? In every moment we're changing, you know, bits of my hair would have fallen out and <laughs> whatever, you know, during, the, or, you know, I'm just changing, I'm, I'm sort of putting more elements in that weren't there earlier or, you know, it's like we're always changing. We're just changing when we're in any interaction with anybody or anything. So we can always make new choices. We can always, yes, yeah, step in a different way. We can always allow more love to live. We can always be a little more loving, a bit more thoughtful. It, it's a choice. Um, but of course, we don't have to. We don't have to act, but that has a consequence. Okay, so another chapter is called Discipline is Enjoyable. Now, discipline often gets a bit bad press, but I go into lots of areas, but there's three areas that I think we, I think if we get right, our life is excellent. If we sleep well, eat well and exercise, in, in the way that we physically are able. Looking at these fundamentals are about self-love, actually. Because I know, I mean, a couple of people in the team meeting said this morning about not sleeping last night or whatever. Um, and you know, if you have a dodgy night, how, how it doesn't quite cheer the next day up, does it, <laughs> you know? Um, but we often don't stop and think, so why is that, you know? Um, and what we eat, we're becoming. And I don't, you know, hear people say, well, I'm going on a diet. Well, we're always on a diet. That's what we're on a diet of food and drink, aren't we? <laughs> it's, it's, but what I'm putting in is what I'm becoming. And I learned through being ill when I was 30 um, that actually my body really didn't like wheat, dairy, sugar, um, hot spices, you know? And, and when I stopped them, um, you know, my, I got so much better, my mind was clearer, it wasn't bogged up with all this stuff. And I, I always say, practice Chinese medicine. So I learned a lot from that. Um, and, uh, you know, my energy now is as good as ever. You know, I feel really well, actually, I often say, you know, I might die tomorrow, but I'm going to die well, thank you very much. Um, and it's sort of like, um, or healthy, you know. Um, so, and if I eat well, um, and I exercise, this, the bodies need to move, don't they? You know, that's what they're here for, as, as much as they are able. I mean, some people aren't as able as others, and that's the way it is, but we can all do a little something, hopefully. Um, and then I'll sleep well. I'm more likely to sleep well. I mean, I'm going to go into something else next, actually. It's sort of like, um, well, first, it's like you're so worth looking at these three fundamentals. And if we get that right, we meditate better. You know, we've, we've got the energy of mind to make better choices and actions for ourselves. Uh, um, but and we need discipline to do these things. We need discipline to eat certain things. And I mean, I know if I go to bed every night at the same time and get up at the same time, well, I don't have to. I, 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 get, I do go to bed at nine most nights when I can, which is pretty much always. And I wake at 4.52 every morning as bright as a button and off I get. And I know if I get up within three, two, three minutes of waking, I'm bright for the day. If I think, oh, I'm gonna treat myself and lie in, you know, snuggle in. <laughs> um, and I wake up 20 minutes later, my brain is fuggy. So I've learned that actually 
the, 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 the gem, you know, the, the, the gift is to get up, you know. But again, it's like listening to your body. What, 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 you know, don't listen to me. Try it out, you know, give it a go, you know. Um, it's, it's a choice. Or you don't have to give it a go. <laughs> um, but it's just like the awareness is amazing. And then the more this being, this collection of elements functions well, the more I can be a positive force for the good in the world, which is my key aim in this particular decade. Um, you know, I want to share what I've been given uh, and, and, so, and, and a lot of what I'm talking about now is what I've been given. You know, I'm just telling you what other people have given to me. So, uh, you know, what I've learned um, from wise people, wise for me and, and from retreats and God knows what. Um, so yes, how are we doing for time? Yeah, because it's a bit flexible at this point. So um, yeah, the next bit is what we dwell on, we become. So how much news are you watching right now? You know, is that helping? You know, um, I, I hadn't watched news properly for about, probably about 23, four years before this started in March. And um, I sort of thought, well, actually to keep people safe and me safe, I do need to know what's going on a little more. I mean, when I didn't listen to news, I still knew what was going on because people tell you, friends, patients, they'll tell, they tell you little bits and bobs, you never miss. And actually there'll be another load of stuff, you know, every moment, every day, won't there? Um, so what I do is I just um, click on Siri um, once a day and ask for please play news. And I get two and a half minutes of BBC news, I get the pith and I know what to do. I got no images coming, it's just a voice. Um, and so what we dwell on, we become, and that's the same with all our choices, all our actions. It's, again, it's not complicated, it's so simple. <laughs> oh God, I wish all humans can just, you know, get hold of this. Um, and um, yeah, so what we dwell on, we become, whether that's the people we mix with, whether we choose to come to these classes or, or not, or what we choose to eat, or um, yeah. It, it, what, what we read, what movies we watch. You know, I haven't watched a horror movie or anything with blood or bad language in it for years. You know, it's not what I want to become. I do watch a lot of romantic movies, actually, though. I want, I'm going to be more loving. <laughs> uh, so, but, you know, you have to find what floats your boat, don't you? But it's sort of, um, you know, what's your boat? This is my boat. You know, so I'm sailing in this lifetime until I sail off the edge to swell. Where? Who knows where? Anyway, there's a chapter about that in the book as well. Um, well, we don't know, do we? That's the thing. Um, yeah, so it, it's not out there. It's here, you know. It, it's, it's all my responsibility. I'm the chain choosing in every moment. I'm choosing now in every moment. Um, although, you know, when this ends, it'll feel like it was a blur to me, you know. <laughs> Did that happen? <laughs> um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I just, actions okay so one action you could you could order my book if you like you know and well you could order it from the local bookshop or you could order it from Windhorse Publications the publisher my wonderful publisher um who had faith in me more than I did but anyway um or or Amazon so your action do you want to help the local bookshop stay there Okay, or do you want to help Wintour's publications keep printing Buddhist books? Because actually, um, my book is a first for them, because my book is a broad, broad um, uh, spectrum personal growth book to, for anyone of any walk of life. It's not just a Buddhist book, because it's how things are, but there's no dodgy language in it, you know, um, that you wouldn't understand. You know, it's just English, it's just simple, accessible words. You know, um, and so they're going into a bigger market because they need to make more money so they can keep being centrally a Buddhist publishers. OK, so do you want to do that or, you know, do you want to help a greedy, huge corporation get bigger and risk lots of small businesses going out of business? Do you know, I only found this out a few weeks ago. Do you know how much commission Amazon takes from selling, say, my book? Not that I get hardly anything from it. 73%. It's obscene. It's so obscene. So our actions have consequences. Okay. 
So it's like, and that's obviously an example of just one thing. But so, you know, it goes into how we, what we choose, what, you know, electricity company we use. And you know, it goes into everything, doesn't it? So uh, all our actions have consequences on the planet, on each other. So, uh, uh, yeah. So what choices do you want to make? How do you want to affect the world? Um, and of course, it's also affecting us all the time. Um, yes. And if you do buy my book and you, 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 you read it, do let me know what you think. Um, I've got a website, danapriya.org, quite simple. Um, and just let me know um, because uh, that would be uh, really nice to know. And if you do like it, share it, tell everybody. I want everybody from 15 to 100 to read it because um, I think that would change the planet. Um, particularly, I'm really going for youngsters. I mean, uh, 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 but um, yeah, anyway, I'll stop rabbiting on about me. Um, yeah, and I've been, you know, just as I said earlier, I've been given so, been given by so much from so many wise people, so many Dharma talks, so many retreats, so many one-to-one -one meetings, you know, my friends and, and just people I meet around, you know, and I just, I just want to share that with everybody I can, um, all the goodness in it, you know, um, yeah, we are amazing, you are amazing, we have all the qualities, we're stuffed full of them, you know, we just need to see differently, and that's what we're doing here, isn't it, we're trying to see differently, and live an extraordinary, ordinary life, and I know because, um, you know, when I'm trying to make a decision about something, you know, I can see, yeah, okay, there's this and that and whatever, and then if I talk to somebody else and they say, well, have you thought about this? And I think, oh, no, I haven't. So my view gets a bit bigger. And somebody else says, have you thought about this? And I was like, oh, no, I haven't thought about that either. And then so, so it gets bigger at the possibilities. So it's sort of like, um, you know, sort of, we really need to, yeah, sort of help each other. You know, we're not on our own with all this. It's not like I've got to make all my choices, you know. I always still take full responsibility for whatever choice in that spectrum I take, but it's from a broader palette. It'll be more colourful. Hopefully it'll be more skillful or harmonious or, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, we are amazing and we can be even more amazing in any moment. I mean, I can do so much more. I can be so much better than I, than I am already. Um, so yeah, it's helping our human predicament. That's what my book's doing and that's what I'm doing here today to help you really. That's why I'm a, a Buddhist practitioner. That's why I ordained somebody last week. You know, it's sort of just, it's just helping um, uh, our actions have amazing positive consequences on the world, the planet, others and myself. Thank you. That's me over and out.